Hey everyone, it's Elton here. Uh, so, as some of you may know, uh, it's been just over a year now since I entered full-time van life. Um, and whilst I've managed to see a few places and do a bit of travelling in that time, I do find myself the past past few days feeling uh, mostly frustrated. Um, frustrated because you know the whole point of selling my house and which was to be in a position to be able to afford to buy a van and, and kind of make this lifestyle change happen. Um, you know, ideally, if I was in a position, I wouldn't have sold the house at all. I would have kept the house um, and rented it out and used that rental income as, you know, to pay for pitch fees and contribute towards the travel. But I just wasn't in a financial position um, where I could keep the house plus buy a van and everything else. <coughs> um, and yeah, as I say, despite having done a little bit of traveling around the UK so far, um, I, I'm nowhere near to where I had envisioned, envisioned myself to be in the amount of traveling I had hoped to do. Um, yes, I've had a few kind of unexpected costs. Um, you know, when I set out, I had a bicycle in the van and I intended for that to be enough um, that I would use the bicycle to kind of go explore and just park the van up on a site somewhere um, but I f soon found out that you know whilst the bicycle was useful for kind of 10 mile radius of where I was based for further afield exploring it just wasn't feasible I was spending more time cycling and sweating my ass off than actually seeing things um, so hence I went and got the tow bar fitted, I then bought a trailer and I then bought a motorcycle. Um, I've then had a few issues with the van when the wheel came off and did damage to the van. Um, um, I've had my, I had to change the cam belt, I've had to get a new alternator fitted. Um, so there's, and then I had a 600 pound dental fee recently, which was again unexpected. Um, so yeah you know finances took a bit of a hit which was unexpected and therefore kind of cut my uh, travel short because i needed to seek employment needed to get an income to replenish that money um so you know i have been on a campsite now for about three and a half months working on a campsite um and you know whilst I love you know the colleagues are really cool I get on really well with my colleagues and it's just nice to have a bit of company there's that underlying constant frustration that I am based on a site and I am based you know I am standing still as it were which kind of you know as I it's got this nagging thing in my head that says dude this is not why you sold your house um, but until I can get my other income streams earning sufficiently this is what I have to do um, and I you know I've got to tell myself that and I have to keep telling myself that but if for those who know me uh, will know that I'm not a man of patience you know um, and I think that's what I'm struggling with right now um, uh, I, I have a winter contract um, for the for the cut for the club it's a zero hour contract, which means, you know, I'm not guaranteed of any work over that period. As and when they need some, me to cover someone on another site, then I will go to that site and do some work. And um, so I'm hoping on my downtime, as it were, during that, that period, because obviously I will be provided with a pitch even when I'm just on standby. Um, I can then focus on those other ideas and income streams that I really wanted to work on now but i'm just finding you know after a 40 hour plus week of quite intense laborious work because again you know my, my in my career in it i didn't do a lot of la laborious work um is that a, is that right word anyway you can look it up um you know so it is you know after a 10 8 hour shift i'm just knackered i really haven't got it in me to then go and sit down and you know update my website and put these ideas that i've got in my head into action um and i only get two days off a week and in those two days off a week i tend to try and get out and explore because otherwise i genuinely feel like i'm not doing anything um so yeah i'm hoping that during this winter contract on the on the periods that i don't actually have an assignment 
I can crack on with my work. Yeah, so besides that frustration of um, you know not having travelled as much as I would have liked by this stage, um, you know, and again, I know what needs to be done. I just got to get on and do it, um, and I am hopeful um, that you know, hopefully by this time next year. I will be in a position where I'm earning sufficiently for my other services and products and passive income streams that I won't need to be kind of tied to a campsite or any other kind of employment as it were. Um, but yeah, besides the traveling, I am struggling with loneliness at the moment. Um, it, it's Which is weird because I actually quite enjoy my own company. Um, and you know I, I'm currently working on a campsite so I have my colleagues that I get on really well with and we have a laugh um, the camp you know the campers themselves I have chats with etc but ultimately when I go out and explore I'm doing that on my own when I come back to the van I'm on my own it was Shaka obviously my dog um, but yeah it's, it's and I don't know if it's the prospect that you know the nights are drawing in is getting dark by eight o'clock um, and the whole prospect of winters just around the corner and I don't know if you know subconsciously that's kind of playing on my mind and, and kind of put me in this down and mood that I'm currently in um, but yeah I am finding it a bit lonely um, you know because I saw my my sister and, the, and her family about three or four weeks ago now and that was great but we only saw them we only had a day to spend together Prior to that, I had my mate Leroy around for just over a couple of weeks, um, but that was about maybe a month and a half ago or something. Um, so I haven't really seen any of my friends or my family now for you know going on a month, um, and when I have seen them, it's for a short period of time. So yeah, it, it's uh, it's just something to be aware of. You know, if you are traveling solo, you do spend a lot of your time alone. Um, and w and initially it really wasn't a problem, um, I said, you know. But as the year has gone on, um, and you know, it, it is starting to kind of become more of a more of a thing. Um, you know, like like I say again, it might just be the fact that you know, with the frustration of not traveling, with the prospect of winter around the corner, the fact that when I used to work till eight o'clock for example I still had two hours three two and a half hours to go out and explore after an eight o'clock finish whereas now when I finish at eight it's pretty much dark um, so I don't have that option anymore after after late shifts to kind of go out and explore um, and even when I'm finishing at six you know I've got a couple of hours maximum so I have to just go and explore locally at no point getting the bike out and going further afield because by the time I get there it's pitch black um, so so yeah uh, you know just be aware that learning this can and probably will become an issue at some point during your your van life experience especially if you are full-time um, you know if you're going home and you're just doing van life as a part-time thing then obviously you get to see your mates and your family on a more regular basis but if you are full-time and you're away from your friends and family and the area that they live in you know where I am down here in South Devon uh, I don't have any close friends or family down here at all um, so I, I just don't see anybody on my days off um, so yeah that's kind of starting to get to me I'm hoping that during the winter contract I'll be based in Hampshire um, where I have my sister and some mates of mine live in the area so I'm hoping then that I will be able to see them on a more regular basis um, so yeah I think those are the two things that I'm really struggling with right now as I say the not traveling and the loneliness um, the other thing that's really starting to do my head in actually is space uh, you know and I'm not sure why again like I say I don't know if it's just accumulation of things right now and, but I'm really starting to get pissed off with space um, in my van um, you know you, you put a plate and a fork out and it's it's a complete mess you know you just don't have counter space you, you just don't have the room for things um, 
you know one of the campers gave me gave me their television set because they upgraded theirs uh, it's a nice little LED set um, and it won't fit in where my current 12 volt TV is which is kind of outdated the colors going on it etc um, it won't fit in that particular cupboard so I've got to put it on you know on a counter somewhere to watch it and then you know I've lost half my counter space so yeah that, that's kind of, that's quite a challenge um, but I'm sure again you know I've dealt with it for a year I'm sure it's just something that's being exasperated because of other things going on um, but yeah it certainly is a blinking challenge is just you know keeping things tidy because like I say it's I'm not an untidy person it's just you know like I say if you leave a, a cup and a plate and a fork out it's just a complete shambles in the in the van so uh, yeah and I just noticed I've got a water bottle here next to me so um, yeah let's get that out the picture frame shall we um, so yeah it's uh, it's not exactly how I had hoped it would be, you know, where I would be after a year on the road. But you know what? I'm still breathing. Um, I'm getting an income. I'm getting the van fixed up next month, and I'll create a different video about that and, and show you the whole process because I have found a garage that's actually willing to let me uh, overnight on their site should the van and the van's going to need to be with them for at least two or three days. Um, but I'll create a separate video of all that. Um, so yeah you know it's not all doom and gloom it's just a bit of a downer at the moment and i wasn't actually going to create this video but i thought well you know the whole premise of this channel is that i'm going to bring you the realities and the truths about van life and uh, it wouldn't be right of me to not share with you the down moments um, you know when when i'm feeling a bit shitty so uh yeah anyway there it is nothing great of value in this video um, just sharing how I feel right now and how you may feel at some point in your van life journey uh, so yeah if you're a van life for yourself and you've had these moments of of kind of down down moments or downers or whatever you want to call it comment below let me know you know how did you deal with it was it just a momentary thing or did it last for longer um, but yeah as I said you know it could be worse it's not worse um, it's just a frustration right now. All right, folks, until next time, be safe, be happy, and be kind. Cheers. Oh, eh, okay, wait, I, I always do this, all right. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. Thank you. Bye-bye.